a Plaguelands Media production. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you another book review. This time I'm reviewing uh, something a little more literature based, something a little classier, although to be perfectly honest with you, at the time of publication it was not considered that. So, uh, cheers. Oh, that is saffonsifying. Today I'm reviewing Boy by James Handley. Now, before I get into the review, I want to give you a little bit of a backstory of this book because it is incredibly fascinating. Boy was written by James Handley in 1931. James Handley is a British author who uh, many people now consider him to be um, one of the few literary geniuses out there, although take that as you will. It all depends on your opinion on what is literature and what is a genius, I guess. Um, so it was released in 1931 and went through a number of reprints up until 1934 when it was picked up by, I believe it was Boris Wood, um, a publishing firm. This book caused the three directors of that publishing firm to uh, go to court over um, basically offensive libel. Um, what happened was a cab driver from Lancashire in England borrowed this book from the public library. Uh, his wife read the blurb on the back of the edition, flipped the fuck out, didn't even read the book, just flipped the fuck out and took it down to the police station where uh, charges were pressed against the directors of the publishing company for publishing such an offensive piece of work. They went to court, their lawyers told them, listen, you're in Lancashire, there is a good chance that if this goes to trial, you are going to go to jail for publishing this book. So they pled guilty, they paid a 400 pound fine, and they were told they could never um, reprint this book again. Why was this book so scandalous? Well, it was scandalous because a cab driver's wife couldn't understand that it's a fucking novel. That if you don't want to read it, don't fucking read it. Now, I'm going to get riled up, but I'll do that at the end of the video. So if you don't want to hear me going on about this kind of thing um, and you don't want to have anything spoiled or you don't want to... Uh, find out what the book's about, just know that I thoroughly enjoyed it. And while I get that some people might find it offensive, I think that banning books just because you have a problem with them is one of the stupidest things a person can absolutely do. You can agree or disagree with me on that point, but if you don't like what the content is, don't fucking read it. It's the same with TV shows. It's the same with movies. If you're going to be offended by it, you know you're going to be offended by it. Don't read it, but don't let other people miss out on the opportunity to do that. So, loved it. I'm going to get into the spoiler field review right now with the next episode of... Read a fucking book. 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 People. So, this book follows the character of Arthur Fearon. Arthur Fearon is a 13 year old boy who. Uh, is in school at the beginning, but he's kind of drifting off, daydreaming a little bit. His teacher's getting really pissed off with him, embarrassing him in front of the class because he can't answer questions and things like that. What his teacher doesn't realise, and this is only brought up after the teacher brings him to see the headmaster of the school, is that Arthur's parents are pulling him out of school to go to work um, as soon as he is old enough, which is in, in a few weeks' time. And... Arthur doesn't want to do that. Arthur loves school. He used to be good at school. And his ultimate goal is to be a teacher. The teacher and the headmaster can't do anything. So Arthur is kind of pulled out of school. And we get to see a little bit of his home life. His father is a bully and a thug. 
and just hates the fact that Arthur is there because it's another mouth to feed. Arthur's mother tries to get in the middle of this, but, you know, she's kind of a meek, uh, submissive wife in that respect. So Arthur's father takes him down to the docks and gets him a job kind of cleaning out the bilge on a ship and working in the furnaces. And because Arthur isn't a union worker, the other boys that are working um, hate him. They torment him. They haze him. And he's just miserable and he hates his life. And he meets one of his neighbours, a friend of his, who says, you should just run away, stow away on a ship. You know, go out, get away from all this if you hate your life so much. And Arthur kind of takes this to heart. And then one night his dad gives him a vicious beating, like throwing him against the wall and whatnot. And Arthur's mother tries to calm things down, um, tries to console Arthur. But that night Arthur runs away and stows away aboard a ship. He hides in the coal, uh, where they store the coal. Because he knows that if he gets caught and the ship is close to England, then he's going to just get put on land, put on shore. And he doesn't want that. So he stows away and his parents really don't seem to care. Um, they just are, you know, whatever. He's, he's gone. He'll come back. No, he won't. He'll come back. No, he won't. They, they really don't give a shit. There is an accident on the ship and all the coal kind of falls on Arthur, almost killing him. And he's discovered, is taken to the medical area by the steward, where the steward in the first kind of disturbing scene we get in this book, the steward tries to have his way with Arthur. He forces Arthur to kiss him, but ultimately uh, he doesn't succeed in going any further than that. Uh, Arthur is then taken to meet the captain, the Captain uh, Wood, who is, in Arthur's estimation, a good man. Uh, captain Wood doesn't know what to do with him, so he puts him in with the chef, uh, thinking that the chef can have Arthur run errands and things like that. He's staying in the chef's quarters, and the first night the chef tries to have his way with him. Uh, Arthur basically rebukes him, goes and speaks to uh, someone, the first mate, I believe, and the first mate goes and reprimands the chef and finds Arthur uh, a room on the ship uh, for his own where the boys used to sleep because um, the ship works for a company and they used to have boys kind of working on the ship with the men, but then they said, no, we're not doing that anymore, so this cabin has been empty, so Arthur gets his own cabin. Um, there is a death on the ship. And so a position has opened up. The captain uh, radios the company and says, listen, we've got a stowaway, but we've also got a dead crew member. Arthur is then given the crew member's place and he's signed on as a crew member of the ship and he's forced to work for the bosun. The bosun is a fucking asshole and just treats Arthur like shit the entire time, forcing him to clean the rooms of him and his friends and do all this shit, serve his dinner. Arthur can't eat until the bosun's eaten and Arthur gets whatever scraps are left and all that kind of stuff. Um, he's starting to regret at this point in the novel. He's starting to regret his choice of a life at sea. Now, the book does a fantastic job of kind of showing what that was like in the uh, late 20s, what that kind of a life um, was like for not only young sailors, but for elderly sailors as well. The ship... Uh, Arthur finds out the ship is sailing to Alexandria. Um, when it arrives, everyone kind of goes off uh, into the into the city to, you know, have their fun, have their shore leave, so to speak. Uh, Arthur wants to go, but the captain doesn't want him to go by himself. So he sends uh, a sailor called Donegan to take Arthur out and get him some new clothes because that's Arthur's just wearing the same old shit that he's had on since he stowed away on board. And uh, so he gives Arthur some money, kind of upfront 10 shillings, and says, Let's, you've got to go and get some clothes. Uh, Donegan takes him out to Alexandria. They get him some new clothes. And then Donegan is like, come on, I'm going to take you somewhere fun. It's called Sister Street, and it's where all the brothels and the can-can shows are. At first, Arthur's very intimidated by this. Uh, Donegan takes him to a, his first can-can show um, and then hires a woman to basically Donegan hires himself a prostitute. 
He takes Arthur up in the room with him. Um, he puts Arthur in the corner while he has sex with the prostitute. Now, I thought, okay, this is going to be the the moment that everyone freaked out about. No, it was described as he got on top of her for three minutes and then he was done. That's the whole scene. But he then forces Arthur to have sex with this woman and Arthur being only like 13 or 14 at the time. Everyone thinks he's 15 because that's uh, what he lied about. He lied about his age. Um, so Arthur has sex with her, doesn't know what he's doing. Um, she, the, the prostitute keeps calling him little baby because he's like just a, a young kid. And it's done and it's over and Donegan takes him back to the ship. Uh, after a few more days, the ship is still in Alexandria. Arthur wants to go back out there. He's thinking about what happened with the prostitute and he wants to wants to go back out there and, and do it again with the same woman. He's kind of obsessed with this woman now. The captain says, no, you're not going anywhere. You're staying on the ship. Uh, he tries to sneak out twice. He is stopped. The third time he slips overboard, um, goes back to shore. At this point, he's got a little bit of money because... The bosun and his friends drop coins under their beds and uh, he's been keeping those coins, hoarding them. So he thinks he can go back to this prostitute and pay her. However, when he gets back to Sister Street, he can't find the same brothel. And at this point, he's about to give up when a woman, I believe is a French woman, um, basically offers to have sex with him for five coins or something pardon me so uh she takes arthur to this uh brothel and basically arthur does whatever he wants to and he has a, he has a great time and that's described in a, a little bit of detail but he wants more and she's like no no we're done and he's begging her like please I'll, I'll give you more coins please let's do it again and he's kind of obsessed at this point she gets the shits and she throws him out um, where he falls down a flight of stairs and is knocked out and then he wakes up and he's on the ship again. Someone has found him, um, taking him back to the ship where he gets in trouble for going out on shore leave. But as the days progress and as the ship leaves Alexandria, Arthur seems to be getting sicker and sicker and sicker. Um, he's got a fever. Um, he's got a problem that he can't tell anyone about, which we do find out about later. Captain Wood at this point has just gone into this drunken stupor. No one's seen him for about five days. The seas are getting rougher. Um, Arthur can't perform his jobs properly. He's passing out. He's trying to take breaks. The bosun's being an asshole. Finally, uh, the first mate gets involved and um, takes him to the medical officer where the medical officer strips him down and realises what has happened. The um, second prostitute has given Arthur syphilis, which back in the day was actually deadly. The medical officer uh, tells Arthur, listen, the best thing you can do is just throw yourself overboard because it's, it's going to be nothing but pain and torment and suffering. And Arthur lays in this hospital bed and contemplates it. He contemplates killing himself. Um, he's crying out for his mother. He's crying out for his father. He's actually written them a letter explaining why he did what he did. But Donegan finds the letter and basically gets rid of it um, for whatever reason. So the captain is told about Arthur's condition and he goes into the room, the hospital room. He's drunk and he sees Arthur writhing in pain. He pulls the blanket off of him and sees that his lower half is just covered in pussy sores. And the captain understands in his own way what Arthur is, how Arthur is going to suffer. So in the last sentence of the book, the captain takes off his coat and basically smothers Arthur to death. And that's where the book ends. And then there's an epilogue where it's just um, like the letters to Arthur's family explaining that he was a seaman, 15-year-old seaman Arthur Fearon, lost overboard. And that's the end of the book. Now, 
I can understand some people not wanting to read this because of the um, sexual nature of the experience that Arthur has as a young boy and ultimately the graphic depiction of the sexually transmitted disease that he suffers from that leads to his ultimate death. I, I understand that. I get it. So if you know what is going to happen from the blurb of a book, don't read the fucking book. I said this at the beginning of the video. But what gives any fucking person the right to stop someone else from reading anything, from watching anything, from, from doing anything? Nothing gives a person that right. Unfortunately, when I read this and I read the, the backstory to this, which is in the foreword and the um, little part at the beginning of the book by um, James Hanley's son, Liam, and there's an um, introduction by Anthony Burgess, which gives you the, the entire story of, of the history of this book and also what that history did to James Hanley. He became a recluse. He tore up copies of his own work because he thought they were distasteful. It, it got to his mind. And that's the worst thing that can happen to a writer when you let other people dictate how you view your own works. Absolutely fucking disgraceful what they did to this book and what they did to this author. Just an absolute fucking disgrace. Now, unfortunately... History has repeated itself. We're seeing the same thing happen in America at the moment. All you have to do is click on any kind of news station, YouTube channel, anything about Texas, Florida, Alabama. And I'm sorry if you're from those places. I, I do apologize that my view is probably not going to be the same as your view. But come on, people. Taking books away is the ultimate form of censorship. Books that have been in circulation for years. This should have been in circulation since 1934. It is a gripping story. It is incredibly well written. The character of Arthur goes through such emotional growth only to revert back to a frightened child when he realizes He's probably not going to see his parents again. The same parents that abused him. On his deathbed, he's basically calling out for them and apologizing to them for leaving. For wanting to make his way in the world. The whole purpose in the letter that he wrote to his parents, he tells them his whole purpose was to earn money to help them because they're poor. And it's all because someone got offended by... A scene in Alexandria where he has sex with a prostitute. I mean, give me a fucking break. Are you serious? No one gives a shit about novels that depict graphic horror. Um, no one gives a shit about novels that depict, you know, a, a sex orgy amongst children. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, Stephen King's It has that exact scene in the novel. And yet, books like this get censored and the people that try to bring these books to the people get taken to court. It's a fucking disgrace. It will always be a fucking disgrace, in my opinion. And please don't let that happen. If there's a book that you want to read, read it. If there's a book that you don't think people should read, then you don't read it, but don't make their fucking choice for them. That's low. That's fucking scummy. I think I've said enough. You know what? I'm going to end this here. If you enjoyed the video, or even if you didn't enjoy the video, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this idea of censorship, because, quite frankly, it pisses me off. Now... I teach uh, writing at a university, and in the first and second weeks of that class, I ask my students, please don't censor yourselves. If there's something you want to say, you say it. It's an open forum. Everyone has their own opinion. Everyone's entitled to their, their right to write. So if you disagree with me, by all means, please leave a comment and let me know. I would love to have an open dialogue 
with you about this issue. I think it's an important issue that we're not talking about as much, um, especially uh, YouTube channels that review things. Either they're for it or they're against it. And if they're against it, they're trying to push agendas on you a lot of the time. Not all of the time, but a lot of the time. So, yeah, um, please, everyone, stay safe. Have a fantastic rest of your day. But most importantly, read a fucking book, people. <laughs>